everyone to uh, Ask an Autistic. We're doing things a little bit differently tonight. Jess mm -hmm. is unfortunately unable to make it, but uh, I'm going to be kind of, uh, you know, making sure that things go okay tonight. So I was actually, I, there was a question that I actually received uh, the other day from a parent that was actually uh, commented to me about watching this uh, series. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and perhaps this might spark a, a follow-up question for you, but one really big problem, and this was, we, it was funny, I was even talking, we were talking a little bit about this before we kind of began the session today. We were talking about jobs and we were talking about um, how it can be really challenging for a lot of people, you know, everybody that even people that are neurotypical to mm -hmm. go through this nine to five grinds or, you know, you do these steady hours. And it's especially harder for people with autism. And that's been consistently uh, shown. So we've talked a lot before about some of the great things that our jobs have offered to us. But there's sometimes parents really want to know a lot of the times, what are some of the common um, issues? In other words, what are some of the things that really can make it hard to have a job in the first place for people with autism. And so what I want to do is I'd love to give each panel, I'll, I'm going to go, uh, I'll, I'll let everybody else uh, speak first, uh, but I want to, you know, give everyone an opportunity to kind of share what are some of the struggles that you sometimes see uh, at your job and makes it hard for you to have the job sometimes. So the person I see First over the computer is Jesse. So Jesse, you want to take it away? You got, you want to share? Yes. Um, well, what really does not help is that I've always had a tendency to pursue jobs that are not right for me, not a good fit or the classic uh, expression, this is not for you. And when people have said that, when people have said that to me, I take it as a very personal insult and it's not constructive criticism because if it were constructive criticism i'd hear what is the problem and they also say this is what you have to do to fix it jesse uh, so i've always pursued jobs that have had some aspect of the human service field such as working in a funeral home a uh, substitute teacher and now uh, working for living resources which is a position i've had since 2015 and like most of my transitions the start of my time at living resources was an absolutely brutal start even though things are a lot closer to perfect now what makes it really hard i'd say is of course the first impression and there's the uh, aspect of getting used to a new routine and there are things that I can do now where it's uh, for other people it's like a gnat trying to crash against plexiglass mean that it's not a big deal and they just think oh that's jesse uh that's just how he is but if you do something a little bit weird in air quotes weird the first week of the job it may be a lot more of a big deal and it, everyone's red flags perk up but now i i realized that there are some things that are funny, but they're funny when you've been working a job for three years. So my basically the whole point of this monologue is that what I would tell people with uh, autism is do not try to be funny. You're not a comedian. Your job is not to entertain people. If it's funny, just assume that not everyone's gonna think it's funny. And I'll give you an example of, uh, very quickly of something humorous that I did, which probably would not have been taken so well the first week of the job. On April Fool's Day, I played a prank on my supervisor and I texted her late in the evening uh, on April 1st of this year and I, I told her this story about how I, uh, I decided to get back together with my uh, former girlfriend who moved back to California and you know, we, now we're engaged. We realized the grass is not greener on the other side with regards to dating and uh, that I'm going to be leaving the company and uh, going to the private sector because it's what she wants. And she thought it was hilarious, but it probably would not be funny uh, at the beginning of the job. In fact, uh, that would start like a path toward 
possibly getting terminated. But that's just an example. And, uh, and also keep a low profile and just f try to be as perfect as possible the first two months. And, uh, and then just focus on doing your job, showing up to work, and uh, trying to go above and beyond the line of duty. I mean, that, I, I wish I could honestly give you a clap for that because that was a really great I, – I loved what you said, especially because you, you raised so many great points, Jesse, because, first of all, it's – for me personally, I think it's really, really hard to kind of, you know, be told, you know, this isn't right for you. Like, I, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, that, that and this is come. This is this happens every day in the business world where, where they don't even give you a reason or whatever like that, and you're in this endless cycle of applying for jobs, and you might not even know. Having somebody tell you, you know, I'm sorry, but you're not really qualified yet. Here's what you could do. It's not necessarily you personally. It's just you don't have the necessary qualifications to meet this job. How about you go and accomplish those things and then apply again? That doesn't exist really. And that's something that I think is a cultural and societal thing that definitely exists within the United States. I know in other countries, things are a little bit different. But one thing I really want to make clear is, is that I think it, what you're really saying, Jesse, is, is that it's sometimes hard for people, um, neurotypical people, to really kind of fully understand and fully um, recognize that what you might, what someone might find funny or find, you know, the way that they interact throughout life might not necessarily be typical. And they're not, you're not trying to do it on purpose to make cause a rise or to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you're, you're trying to really just go throughout the day. And I, I think that that's such a really great point. So thank you for sharing. Jeff, I see you next on my screen. Do you have anything you'd like to talk about with this? Well, I think the important thing that a lot of people with, um, on, with autism have to consider is uh, when it comes to getting a job, they might, one thing they might worry about is a change in routine. Like I know when I oh. was getting my first job, I had um, been struck, I kind of struggled with, you Just know, putting in the kitchen and all that. So, um, when I first became, uh, when I first got a job, I was taught over and over again to be uh, flexible. And being flexible at my, on the spectrum is not really easy for anyone. And, you know, it's, it's tough for, um, it's, it's tough in the sense that, you know, you, you stick to a routine, whether it's, you know, you have to do this at a certain time or, you know, have to do this at another certain time. It's it's difficult, but you have to remember is that as someone on the spectrum, or someone with autism for that matter, you, you you've got to you've got to understand that you need to play by the game of your employer, not by the game of you. It's part of you know part of being on a team, and if you're and if you're going to be willing to be flexible then you'll have a better chance of being on that team. But if not, then your chances are going to be very difficult. Sorry, it was uh, muted. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that. And that's something that I think a lot of people have. Sometimes for me, sometimes when I'm working, and that's why sometimes people uh, that are autistic, they sometimes are self-employed or they're, they find ways to kind of, you know, not necessarily have to, have to deal with it. But it is good to kind of, learn i think from an employer about you know kind of that flexible thinking and like there's definitely and sometimes i think we're even right when we think that sometimes when we say you know we there's a better way to do this or i'd rather do it in this particular way nine times out of ten sometimes you know we're pretty right on uh, on the money with that but it doesn't necessarily matter because there's still this you know some people aren't as receptive to the collaboration and it's, it's really hard uh, let's see. Um, I, I have always found it to be very hard to be self-employed unless I was still living at home. Yeah. So, okay. So that, that's another end of the uh, spectrum. Sometimes people um, find it hard. They need that structure, the routine, somebody real definitive uh, ways 
of really ensuring they know what to do throughout the day. So I, I can actually understand that. And self-employment isn't for everyone. That's why there's not as many, you know, there's tons of people that work for companies years and years and years. And that's not a bad thing at all. I mean, that's a way of life. That's millions of people do it every, every uh, day. Well, you're right. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being self-employed, but it would be hard if I were not living at home while being self-employed because, uh, uh, for example, I was self-employed for a very long time, uh, for years as an author and motivational speaker. And unless I had a book advance or a lucrative speaking engagement, there would be no money for rent and my own groceries. Mm -hmm. as is, uh, more the case now, even though I do get some assistance from my mother and father. So you're kind of, if you are an eBay seller and you're on your own, you're just at the mercy of a really good month and it's feast or famine. That can be really stressful. And I, I believe it or not, um, although I'm, I, I work pretty much around the clock, I definitely have experienced bouts of that where money is uh, very tight. And part of that is due to me being a bit younger, but also part of that is me, I think, due to not necessarily having um, that full uh, strength or the development of being able to kind of really manage um, a lot of the uh, inner machinations of uh, kind of what goes on with finances. But I'm going to get there yet. And again, everything is a work in progress. Um, okay, so let's move on to Michelle. Michelle, do you have any comment that you'd like to share? I, so I'm going to actually tell a little bit about how I got to where I'm at today with my job because how I, for me, how I did it, it was actually because of my volunteering I did back in high school. So I, um, what happened was that, and during my senior year of high school, I was a peer mentor to students with disabilities. And I also volunteered for a before and after care program with uh, elementary school children of general and with special ed. So um, because of that, that actually kind of led me to working my way up, which that's actually one of the key things about with just getting a job in general is working your way up. That's what Jeff was saying that with, um, pretty much with like playing the employer's game in the way. What it is is that we're going by, basically it depends on like years of experience that you have of a skill or anything that you get yourself out there for. But um, yeah, so because of my uh, experiences ever since high school with volunteering and everything, that helped me when I was starting off in college, I got a part-time job working for the before and after care program that I volunteered with. And that led me to various other jobs, such as working in a school year program and stuff, and get gaining more experience of working specifically with children with autism. So that's pretty much with me. But mm -hmm. my challenges were interviews. I don't know about you guys, but interviews were one of the hardest things for me because trying to recall, understand the the questions because they were so worded. Uh, I'm like, I had times where employers were asking me questions that, um, that were not worded well enough that I could understand. And I felt like at times that I could have provided a better response to the questions and everything. So I definitely know interviews is a hard thing and that, um, that should be, that definitely that should be taught more about like especially to like any person really like how to go through with interviews because that's not an easy thing to do and um and stuff but it's an important part of the process before even getting a job so that's just my take about with this i i you know it's so funny that you said all of this michelle because just a little and i won't go too much into my i want to get other panelists to share first before me but for me, interviews was always something that really just came naturally to me. I've actually, the jobs that I've worked and applied for, that I've interviewed for, I always got, I w w was offered essentially on the spot. But the jobs, that doesn't mean though, I applied to tons of jobs before over the computer or those types of things. I can't tell you how many times I've been rejected. I've been rejected more times than I was Same. accepted. But... <laughs> 
uh, while I am, while I, I, I definitely interviews have been really easy for me, what you describe as something that you're kind of really good with, I'm not, which is kind of advancing yourself and kind of <laughs> understanding the little minutia or the ways to kind of, you know, crawl your way out of this entry level, you know, type of thing. Because I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with obviously skill and obviously you're incredibly skilled. You're, you're an unbelievable, uh, uh, district school district employee but I think a lot of it also has to do with that personality feature and I'm I, I'm not sure how to really access that I mean I I, 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 I will work overtime I'll do everything you know and I, I have that personality but I think some of it is also being able to relate and having more of that personal relationship with and for me that's hard I, I, I can never really get to the next level and I think that that might be something uh, for me to person <clears throat> as well as others and kind of understanding the strengths and weaknesses. And I think it's also important because you talked a little bit about how it's really important that we're getting trained, everybody, not, not just autistics, but everyone getting trained for the job interview and like that type of thing. And instead of doing that in schools, we're learning about uh, quadratics, uh, quadratic equations. And so I absolutely agree with that. And I, I absolutely loved your perspective. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay, so we went through, all right, so we actually have a guest tonight, uh, Mike. Mike sometimes pops in and out. And Mike, uh, <laughs> I, you've, uh, yeah, you've identified yourself as autistic and I wanted to give you a chance to uh, comment about this if you have any thoughts you'd like to share. Well, I'm lucky enough to uh, have a, a family friend who was nice enough to give me a job to work at his liquor store here in town and um, it, uh, it really taught me a lot. I was able to, uh, you know, learn uh, how to interact with customers very well. Uh, he taught me sarcasm pretty good, which I know a lot of people with autism really struggle with. Um, yeah, the job really taught me a lot of good things and um, I uh, still get a little anxious every now once in a while if a, a customer tries talking to me, but um, I try to be as polite as possible. And every now and then I'll get a customer that'll like really uh, be really grumpy and he'll kind of be, like yell at me or whatever. Like mm. since one customer, I think it was last year, um, he tried to recycle his uh, his beer cans, and we couldn't take the cans for uh, because we didn't have a, a recycling machine to put them in. So when I told him that we can't take them, he called me an effing idiot, mm. which uh, you know really hurt my feelings. But my boss was like, "Mike, don't let him get you down. This is part of the job. Probably just uh, forget about him." So, yeah, but other than that, I really love the job, though. Well, you know what, Mike? I, 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 I'm I sorry that you go through that experience. Um, yeah, and we're calling this, you know, it's funny because you hear about these stories, you know, of Karens or, like, people that, like, will come into, you know, a restaurant or in, in some type of store or whatever, and they'll, they'll, they'll just give you, like, a hard time. And, like, they're a real jerk, yeah. everything like that. And um, I'm 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 sorry that you had to deal with that, and uh, you know it's it's not a nice way to you know interact, nor is it a great way to kind of you know work. You know that's not no. the environment that you want. But it's great that you were able to connect with your family and friends and get this nice gig at the uh, liquor store, and uh, that that that's really awesome. And I think it's also really important. Also, um, it, it, it's not wrong whatsoever. It's an unbelievably great uh, choice to really interact with your family and friends regarding careers. They might know somebody who knows someone who knows someone and they can help you. That's why we have family and friends. So one reason why we have family and friends is really to kind of help us succeed. We want our friends and family to succeed. They can help us succeed as well. So I think it's also about building connections and uh, linking. So I'm going to share a quick perspective for me working and whatnot, and then um, we will go from there. So I actually, I started a new job uh, that I'm really jazzed about, and that was on Monday. 
and I'm working at a uh, psychiatric hospital as an MHA or a mental health associate. And this is really exciting for me because um, I, uh, I'm a college student right now, right? So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a freshman college student and it's all online and everything. And then some of it will be in person. It's like a hybrid. But then um, I also, I run a business. I'm at my office right now. I do educational advocacy and consulting. And I always had clients that actually would sometimes go to this hospital that I'm now working at. And, you know, I saw some openings, I was looking at the website and I was like, you know what, as long as I don't really, if, as long as I'm, I'm not necessarily surrounding myself with patients that I may have represented, this could be a really, you know, nice gig for me. So I specifically, um, you know, I wanted to join, I, I, I wanted to kind of be a part of it. And, uh, the training, I, I, I'm, I'm a per diem, so like I wanted to just do it over the weekends or like, you know, really like casually. But then, you know, call it, there'll be breaks and then there'll be certain, you know, light periods depending on if schools are closed due to COVID or, you know, I'm not necessarily having a ton of clients at the moment, which I don't think is likely, but there's always that possibility. Um, I still have to go through training. So each day, it's uh, eight hours of training. So today I actually got out at one, but I'm there from eight o'clock to 4.30. And there's only that 30 minute lunch break. And that's hard for me. And I think that that would be hard for a lot of people, um, but that's hard for me specifically because uh, while I do have autism, I'm also uh, physically disabled. And a lot of times I get fatigued very, very easily. I absolutely love the work. I could do it all day long. I just need a little bit of some of that rest. And obviously your employer can accommodate and they can help you and they can do that type of thing. But for me, it's still really hard. And I also found it to be a little bit hard because of the fact that um, I don't want them to get the wrong impression or think that I'm saying something or I'm implying or I'm doing something that is negative. I, I, I try to communicate well and effectively, but a lot of times I'll say the wrong thing or like kind of Jesse was saying, sometimes they might not really fully understand kind of what you're all about. And I was a little nervous because I've absolutely had experience working with mental, uh, in the mental health field, specifically with depression, bipolar, sometimes uh, sadly schizophrenia, but I'm really, I'm really garnered, especially towards, uh, you know, autism, ADD, ADHD, all that learning school stuff. And they were saying some really, like today, not in a rude or pejorative way, but they were saying, you know, if somebody, like just some really like outdated terms regarding special needs kids or whatever. And I was like, you know, wow, I'm a little out of my element. Like they were saying, you know, like a low IQ kid means that they have, means that they have autism. Just a lot of really crazy stuff that, the experts with, the, with with so many mental health, but kind of when it comes to developmental and learning, I kind of, they didn't really know what was going on. And I kind of wanted to say, oh my Lord, you know, like you, this, uh, you know, no, nope, that's not how, how we actually phrase it. I know you're not trying to be a jerk. So there's a lot of things that have been challenging about it. And I think for people, for me, um, I'm able to work multiple jobs because I'm, uh, I, I, I just happen to have that capability. Some people uh, don't. Some people that are neurotypical uh, don't, don't have the capability. Some do, whatever it may be. It's a wide variety. There are people that um, are autistic that work sometimes three to four jobs. And then there are some that kind of really do it on a per diem basis. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. for Two jobs. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that, and that's incredible. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter because we know that everybody has a purpose and everybody is contributing. So I guess for me, the pe to the people out there that are watching this, that are kind of wondering, you know, either, you know, is it gonna, what, what's my life gonna be like with, the, with, with, with working uh, or what's my son or daughter's life gonna be uh, like, you know, with, within the job setting. And although I don't want the, the impression from uh, tonight's episode to be negative. I want this to really essentially be positive because we all just shared some of the negative experiences, but did I, I didn't just resign. I didn't just quit and say, you know what, after sharing this, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to choose to get dressed in the morning and go to this job. 
I didn't see Michelle choose to resign from their job right now. I didn't see Jesse. I didn't see anybody right here say, you know what? Now that I think about it, this is really, I, I hate it. I hate my life. And it's not wrong to change careers or directions, but I want the viewers especially to notice that we really were, we're driven. We are driven people. And there's this misconception that autistic individuals there's there's really not that much that they can really uh, accomplish. And that's just simply not true. I mean, the, the schools need so many parents. We need so many people to speak to the public, Jesse, about um, autism. Jeff, we need people to make sure that chat rooms are, you know, make sure that nothing crazy happens. And then, Mike, we need to make sure, especially now, we need to make sure that liquor is being given to a lot of people, because especially yeah. with Corona okay. thing. So... Everybody has a function. Everybody has a certain uh, characteristic that they bring to the table. We all make the world go around, and that doesn't stop with autistics. We really can help, and that's something that I think we've really uh, shown. So I'm going to read a few things that were just said to the chat. Oh, um, Aiden, can I add something? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. It just just to, uh, we're, just to let you guys know, we only have about four minutes left before we're going to end tonight, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to wrap things up now, okay? So yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, definitely for people to, like just to help with like employment, like resources are out there. Whatever it be like, I know in New Jersey we have like the disability rehabilitation vocational services. So I actually went through that personally myself, and it kind of, it helps a lot. I will. Look at you. Look at you. So I'm like, I definitely use your resources out there. Whatever state you live in doesn't matter. It's they do have a lot of opportunities out there to help. You're, you're, you're not alone. And there are some <laughs> states, you know, that, that really, you know, are not necessarily focused on that. And then there are some more states that really do find that to be a value and a virtue of really making sure everyone has access. And I believe New Jersey definitely is one of those states that does have that. I, 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 I definitely believe that. But um, I guess just to wrap things up, I Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining and have a great night.